Hey, I'm Nate, and this is the Dwarven Forge Build of the Month. This is a brand new video series that we're rolling out, and it's our very first episode, we're super excited to bring it to you. Each month, we're gonna feature a different build that uses different terrain of ours, different locales, different puzzles, all sorts of different ways to sort of torture your players, let's be honest. Uh, we're gonna try to inspire you for builds that you can do at home, and show you different ways that we use this stuff over here at Dwarven Forge. This first build is called the Urge to Dirge. It's a pretty small encounter, but it packs in a ton of musical puzzles that should really give a good challenge to any party. It's also featured in Volume 2 of Dwarven Quarterly. There's a link below in the description so you can get a full module write-up for this encounter. It only requires three sets to build this thing. It's a starter dungeon, passage intersection, and double door down and pack. So it's, it's pretty affordable and it's all easy sets to get. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the Urge to Dirge. So the Urge to Dirge here is essentially a big musically themed puzzle where the players are gonna enter in here and they're gonna try and get some treasure all the way at the end. This first area right here is the entry vestibule. And when they come in, probably, there's a pretty easy to discover pressure plate here. This first, this 10 by 10 section here is all a pressure plate. And we kind of want the players to see it uh, because they're gonna think they're really clever and they found a trap, but it doesn't actually really do anything at this point. So if somebody does step on it, it'll notably depress uh, and it'll create a uh, sort of a vacuum sound like air whooshing, but it doesn't actually do anything right now, but it should get them kind of on edge. And if they do discover it and they skirt it, they feel like they're clever, but they don't know what it does. It can't be disarmed and they probably don't know what's going on, but later they're gonna find out this is the sustain pedal for some music later, but we'll get there. By the way, this is built with, these are, it's just two walls and then these are the passage inside corners. I use four of those. So it's, this is how you'd build a four way intersection, except instead of floors, I used a couple of walls to make these little nooks on the side. So they proceed past this 10 by 10 pressure plate over here because they're gonna see some treasure right ahead, right? What adventurer is gonna say no to some treasure? So there's a big 10 by 10 floor of spikes with some treasure sitting right on top of it. For this thing, I actually, I put the, uh, I put the spikes on top of the, uh, the floor cover. So normally you pop the floor cover on the spikes, I put it down first and then put the spikes on top of it so it'd be raised. You could also just set them into the floor, but it felt kind of more exciting and more dangerous when they were up on top. I don't know, I've never done that build before, so I figured I'd give it a whirl. Some eagle-eyed players might notice that there's some magic projectiles uh, and missile weapons in there. There's a couple of magic sling stones, there's a magic crossbow bolt, and there's a magic uh, throwing dagger in there. And buried under the coins, there's a big giant ruby that's worth like 500 gold. But there's a catch. The treasure is affixed super firmly to this with a giant magnet, a magical magnet that's hidden under the floor. So they can't move any of this treasure. It's all held down. The ruby is underneath the other treasure, so it's sort of pinned in place. So they don't even know it's there. So they can't actually pull any of the treasure out because the magnet is so damn strong. Like, it's just unbreakably strong. And, just for fun, once they get close, and there's a, the magnet's so strong that anybody wearing metal armor will get pulled in onto the spikes. So they got to make some... Uh, some strength saves to sort of pull themselves back. So anybody that steps in any of the squares immediately adjacent to the pit is gonna get uh, pulled in there. So maybe if they're really uh, clever, they'll start taking all their armor off, but then of course, once they've doffed their armor, they're not wearing armor, which will make things harder down the line, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, they'll, they'll probably skirt that. They may ignore these dead ends for now and come over to this door because there's this big kind of magical looking golden door at the end of the hallway that's beckoning them. So this is the dirge door. It's magically sealed, uh, but the secret to opening it is right on the door, inscribed on the door. So these circles here each represent different musical notes, and these horizontal lines are a uh, the musical staff. So any character that's a bard or an entertainer or trained in an instrument gets advantage on this check to figure it out. Uh, it should be pretty easy for them to figure out that it's an ancient song, an ancient dwarven funeral dirge. So the instrument is actually this hallway itself. So over in these side hallways, we're calling these the music halls, uh, there's pressure plates on the last six squares of each hallway. And they're, once again, they're pretty easy to discover so the thieves will feel clever when they find them and the like. So each square produces a different note. So we start with an A and move to an A sharp and then a B and then a C and then a C sharp. So they're going up. So it just goes up six notes here, six notes there to get the major harmonic scale. What is that? The, Right, it's the A, I don't know. 
It's some sort of scale. I'm, I'm clearly not a musician. So what will happen is the players will decipher this door and get the series of notes they need to play. And then they're, they'll have to play them in order by jumping on the squares. But of course, some of the notes are over here, some of the notes are over here. And just to make it fun, this area over here, this 10 by 10, is the sustain pedal. We have some of the notes we need to be played with a sustain at the same time. The notes that are corresponding to the large circles have to have a sustain at the same time. So some, one player's going to have to jump on a note while another player jumps on the sustain. Uh, and it's kind of a fun pattern that makes them sort of go all over the place. The added challenge is if they get one of the notes in the sequence wrong, then it triggers uh, a trap where there's this crazy thunder wave that'll blast down this hallway and down both of these hallways. It's going to do damage to anybody that's in any of those hallways. This area is safe. Uh, and it's going to knock anybody that hits 10 feet towards the pit once again. So if they're right down here, they'll fall in and get spiked. If they're still wearing metal armor and they get within five feet, then they'll have to make them save and get pulled in. So there might be a lot of spiking happening, uh, especially if they mess up the notes. Once they get it correct, it, uh, it plays a beautiful uh, dwarven funeral dirge. This really inspiring and somber funeral dirge. is like these giant subterranean bells are ringing it out. Uh, and in fact, it's so inspiring it'll give uh, any dwarf player that hears it will get inspiration there. And boom, there'll be like a glow and the doors will open. Players are then confronted with an empty room. Well, it's empty except for this decorative plinth in, set in the back wall. So this plinth, I actually just took the outside corners from the passages, put those on a two by one floor and put the plinth there and sort of put it in so it'd be a nice little nook framed by this double doorway arch. The nook has an inscription around it, which is the only thing in this room. And the inscription reads, Now sing ye a tune most rowdy and bold, then magically behold, this fills up with gold. Uh, which. Basically, it means they just have to sing a song. The better the performance, the better it will be for them down the line. So if anybody sings a song, it'll uh, create a magical reaction, whereas the magnet over here will release. Yay, they can finally get treasure. But it'll be replaced by an even stronger magnetic field in the plinth itself. So suddenly, all the treasure that's here is going to get picked up and go shooting at terrible velocity uh, into the nook, uh, which is great because then they can claim it. However, any players that are in this, uh, this area, particularly if someone was here singing or if they came in and they're just sort of standing around or the like, uh, will be in the path of this treasure. They also, they may have taken off their armor because they didn't want to get stuck by this, so now they're going to be even uh, more vulnerable. And you may recall there were a bunch of magic projectiles in that treasure. So now there's magic sling stones, magic throwing daggers, and magic bolt along with a thousand gold pieces flying through the air at like 100 miles an hour uh, at some preferably unarmored PCs who are standing in the path of it. So they may get showered with a bunch of gold, take some damage, maybe get impaled with some magic weapons, but then they get the treasure at the end. So then it all goes flying into the nook, and sure enough, the nook fills up with gold, uh, and now they can take the gold and they can limp their way out of here uh, and call it a day. It's a musically themed puzzle that should uh, hopefully tickle your inner dungeon maestro, as it were. Yeah. All right, so that was our very first build, the Urge to Dirge. Uh, let us know if your players survive it, what they think, if they enjoyed it. Uh, and then next month, we'll be back with yet another devious creation. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, follow us on social media. You don't want to miss out on these fun episodes. Uh, next month, we'll be back with some devious dungeon designs. Uh, can't wait to see you then. Enjoy.